The game starts simultaneously in the hands of the designers and then in the hands of the writers, uh, Amy specifically. And so they're kind of in parallel. Amy is writing the story and the designers are designing levels. So sometimes a level is designed long before we have any clue what the story is. It's a very creative environment. And I think in all creative environments, you can't just start two years before the the project is supposed to be released and say, okay, here's a blueprint of what it's supposed to be. Everyone go off, do their thing, and then we'll meet back here in two years and it will be perfect. <laughs> no, no, no. That's not how it works. One of the things that we wanted to do uh, for this project was to, to improve the way that artists could work with, uh, with the engine. Uh, it was a bit rigid and, you know, we we were foreseeing a lot more sort of action scenes and you know, cinematic events and all of these things which require a lot more sort of specific control over the environment. We've expanded the scope in pretty much every way. Um, every feature we could think of um, that would make the game better, we, we tried it. Um, most of the time we, we kept it in. A couple things we tried and, and didn't like, but in general we've just made everything much bigger and, and better. It's very creative in the beginning. Um, after our brainstorming meetings we know that there's some things. We can go off and start pushing the technology in the direction that we know we might go. Um, but yeah, the, the, the storyline, the, which characters, what they will do, that's all up in the air and it really comes late in the project. If you come up with some part of the story that's really neat uh, but is not going to be very fun, you have to negotiate with the designers. Okay, how can we change the story slightly to make this gameplay fun and then you have vice versa if you have a really cool bit of gameplay that doesn't make any sense in the story at all you have to figure okay what can we do can we add characters in can we take characters out can we move them around um, for instance there's a, a chase scene in Yemen uh, in Uncharted 3 where uh, we're chasing a guy through a level we had no idea who that guy was uh, for I'd say about a year and a quarter uh, but we had the level we made it we didn't know who he was going to be, and then finally the story caught up, and then, boom, we know who that is now. We were really approaching uh, movie-like quality now in, in video games, and uh, you have to put some serious effort into adding the detail. One of the main focuses is obviously uh, uh, characters. Our whole game is about characters and making sure that we can, we can really deliver the uh, environment and the storytelling that that uh, Amy and uh, all of our designers want to portray in the game we need to facilitate that somehow and that is pushing the boundaries for uh, for how we do character animation pushing the boundaries of uh, grounding in the environment things we didn't have in Uncharted 2 that just adds that little extra believability to the game for example, if you're running really fast into a corridor with a 90 degree turn, you don't just happily take the corner, you actually kind of struggle, you touch the wall maybe to push yourself forward. That was one of the, uh, the character and the animator's vision, if you want, if you will. Uh, we're, they really wanted the characters to look better. But on the other hand, we also have, like we have many customers and one of them would be are game designers. I remember uh, Jacob uh, Minkoff, one of the lead designers on U3, I remember at the very beginning, he came up, when he came up with the cruise ship level, uh, and he kind of laid it all out, he was like, okay, tell me now if this is impossible. And we were like, it's too cool to be impossible. We have to find a way to do it. A ship seems like a great thing, you know, it's, it's something which makes it more interesting because it's actually moving. Uh, so when you climb on a boat, it's, it's, it's quite different from climbing on, 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 a, on a solid structure. The biggest change for us in terms of, of, of graphics was that now you're talking about the whole group of things that is together moving together. So it's essentially the, the levels that are strung together and the whole level is moving. It's not individual object, it's a level that is moving. And we didn't have that before, so we, had, we needed to implement it. We had technological challenges for almost every single level. The, the burning and collapsing building while you're, you're in it. The, uh, the cruise ship that is actually being driven by huge enormous waves to rotate 
an environment 90 degrees and and have the character and the objects and everything still work and now you're walking on like the side of the environment instead of the floor it's it's not something that's trivially accomplished for instance the water pouring down the hallways we tried a bunch of different things our original plan was to do it using like some sort of uh, real-time physics stuff and then we tried offline physics and then we uh, went back to real-time and then we finally came up with uh, animating offline physics simulations and then bringing them into the game and then mixing them with different um, real-time physics at the same time kind of a hybrid approach and all of that stuff we kept failing over and over until we finally figured it out it's how how almost all of the stuff gets in the game. We fail about a hundred times and then we get one, we finally figure it out and then it's it. There's a spark in everyone to create something and you know, give them enough uh, uh, things to play with, you know, they'll create something awesome. We love our open floor plan, the ability for everybody to hear what's going on just by sitting down. Just if you're working normally you will hear everything that's going on around you, which is awesome. Uh, it takes a little getting used to if you're easily distracted, but sometimes being easily distracted is good because you'll be able to influence something that needs your input that maybe they didn't know they needed your input. It is so fulfilling walking away and saying, you know what, that game we made, it wasn't just, which we hope, obviously, well received by, by our fans, but it was fun to make. Like we are, we are engineers, we're game players, we're, we write story, we, we write game design, but at the end of the day, we like playing games.